Linux community is the antithesis of safety critical software engineering. This makes it sound like if you just run anything on Linux, your computer is going to explode. Recently, the Linux Foundation's Embedded Open Source Summit occurred in Prague. And at this summit, there is another summit called the Safety Critical Software Summit. And at this event, there was a debate over using Linux in aerospace applications. Now, this makes sense, but I was unaware of this. Obviously, a lot of aerospace applications make use of proprietary software, but they also make use of proprietary operating systems. This makes it fairly difficult to bring new people onto the system as they basically have no experience with it and you have to train them up on how to actually use it. This debate was held by Stephen Bricker of UL Solutions, a standards and safety company alongside Stephen Vanderleest, the chief technologist of Boeing's Linux initiative. Now sadly, no recording is available as of yet. When the recording is available, send me a message and I'll add it into the description. But the slides they used those are available, and they are absolutely worth a read. Debating Linux in Aerospace, Objections and Paths Forward. Now, unless they are really relevant, I'll be skipping over slides that are just listing out standards. If you want to go back and read them for yourself, though, I'll leave it all in the description down below. As you might expect, the requirements for software in an aerospace application are very different than that of a desktop application, of a coffee pot, of anything where it's not really safety critical and something breaking, everybody is going to die. So in this case, we have assurance concepts and standards. Firstly, assurance concepts. You need things to be safe and reliable. Reliable means the system does good things and behaves according to the specification. Safe means the system doesn't do bad things and does not exhibit any unspecified behavior. But different aspects of the system are going to have different requirements for meeting these qualities. So you have the route of the customer's Wi-Fi. If this breaks, it's not really that big of a deal. Maybe you'll have some customer disputes. Maybe you have some customers who are requesting a refund. But it's nowhere near as important as your navigation system, as your steering system, and things where if it goes wrong, people will actually die. So the way we define this is with the Design Assurance Level, DAL, also known as Software Level. DALA is the most critical, DALE is the least critical. So you have that range with your Wi-Fi and the steering, for example. You also need evidence of correctness. This includes following a defined process of formal documentation of validation and verification. Validation means the right product was built, and verification means the product was built right. These sound like very similar concepts, but they are very, very different. If I say, build me a bicycle, and you hand me one, but it's missing a wheel and has no brakes, you have built the correct product, but you have not built it correctly. If I say, hand me a bicycle, and you give me a tricycle, it's built exactly like it should be, you have built a product correctly, but you have not built the correct product. And alongside this evidence of correctness, you need a traceable design. You need your system requirements to link into your software requirements, into your design, into your code, into your tests, and back and forth and all around the place, you need your entire system to link together. If you have your system requirements, you should be able to look at the code and say, okay, this is how this applies to this, and this applies to this, and so on and so forth. And to make sure this all happens, you need to make sure things are tested. This takes you back to the dull D, dull C, dull B, dull A, and all of those things. And basically, the more critical system needs to be tested more thoroughly. Now, this takes us into the Linux part, the benefits of using open source. Visibility allows for broader review. So if you have some system, whether it's the OS or some software you use that is available to the public that anybody can see, more eyes are going to be on that project. More people can see, okay, there's a security vulnerability here, there is a bug here, and hopefully that leads to much better software. Crowdsourcing provides quicker and broader innovation. In the same way, if you have more people thinking about a problem, there are more solutions that are going to be available, and maybe someone who otherwise wouldn't have worked on the project can provide something that is incredibly important. Also, you have a well-known API, a well-known system, so it's easier to find competent developers and it's easier for others to understand the code. Nobody in the FOSS world would really disagree with this. This seems like a pretty standard thing to say. Now, here is the fun part, the start of the objections. 
Linux does not have certification artifacts. Linux does not protect code. The design of Linux does not permit safety. And Linux does not have the right culture. All of those things probably don't make any sense by themselves, but he does expand upon each of these individual points. So let's see what he has to say. Linux was not designed. <laughs> now, that does sound really stupid if you just say it by itself. What he's saying here is Linux is not some really well-defined system architecture, system design, where you can trace why each decision was made. It was made basically by a committee, effectively, it was made by the community adding patches as they go. There's no overarching design process that went into it. Linux does not have a set of requirements. This is basically saying the same thing. Linux has no defined architecture, and Linux does not have unit design. All of this is basically a long way to say what he said here. Linux was not designed. It was cobbled together over 30 years as people needed to add things they needed to add. The only kind of design that exists is Linus Torvalds is there saying this is what is going in the code base and this is what is not going in the code base, but there's no formal design document defining that. So what is the possible path forward? Reverse engineer artifacts from source code, forward engineer from system requirements, weave together for a complete set that satisfies all objectives. Basically take the existing source code and then retrospectively create the requirements documentation, the testing, and all of the other stuff you need to be a super serious suit wearing project. Create an appropriate coding standard, apply to code, and patch the problems. Basically, write code, write good code, and make code better. Identify the architecture, encourage community adherence. Good luck with that one. Uh, I wish you a lot of luck because you're not going to completely revolutionize the way the kernel works. And finally, perform a safety analysis to look for possible flaws. Basically, find problem, fix problem. Second objection, Linux does not protect code. Linux does not have a plan. He's not wrong. What he's actually trying to say is anyone can write a driver, and it can misbehave inside the kernel. So the possible path forward. Curated and baseline profiles with defined configuration. Configuration should include both the compiler config for builds and the overall system config for which drivers are included. Basically, include the things you want to include and don't include the things you don't want to include. If some of these drivers are a little bit problematic and you don't actually need them in your system, get rid of them. Like, they don't need to be there, just chuck them out. Objection the third. The kernel is monolithic. Drivers all run at kernel level with the highest privilege. This is absolutely correct, and some people actually do argue that Linux probably shouldn't be a monolithic kernel and instead should be a microkernel. There are plenty of historical reasons why that is not the case, but now it basically is what it is. The possible path forward. Small profile certified to highest DAL necessary. Basically, strip the kernel down, test very extensively what you need, and make sure it is as stable as you can possibly get. Also, use the space drivers only. Basically, just turn the kernel into a microkernel. It's not designed to do it like that, but hey, you can do it. There are plenty of user space drivers that already exist. And finally, make Linux a guest OS. Don't let it touch the hardware directly, so if something does go wrong, hopefully it doesn't bring the entire system down. And finally, my favorite one. The fourth objection, Linux does not have the right culture. I'm going to show you these one by one because that makes it even funnier. Linux does not have a safety culture. Fair enough. Linux does not have a quality culture. Once again, because we are just making things as we go, making sure that every single patch is stable in every single context isn't exactly a focus for most developers. Most people are testing it on their system and maybe a couple of other things but then it's up to the kernel maintainers to make sure that things are stable in a wider context, and sometimes things absolutely do slip through. Third, Linux does not have a software engineering culture. 
Once again, like the earlier one where it was saying Linux is not designed, this isn't saying that Linux doesn't have software engineers working on it. What it's saying here is Linux is just haphazardly designed. It's designed as a programmer would make something, not necessarily as a software engineer would, where everything is highly documented, everything is highly tested. It's just add things as we go, and hopefully it just all works together. And most of the time, because people are really good developers, it does do a pretty good job. The next one, Linux is chaotic. You do not get to choose who is on the project. That's not exactly the case. You as some person outside of the project don't get to choose who is involved. But people like Torvalds and other kernel maintainers absolutely do get to choose. If someone is being a nuisance, if someone is just submitting garbage code, if someone just cannot make code that actually works, they can just say, we are no longer going to accept patches from this person, go away and do something else. And finally, the reason why I wanted to make this video, Linux community is the antithesis of safety critical software engineering. This makes it sound like if you just run anything on Linux, your computer is going to explode. That's not at all the case. <laughs> I know what he's trying to say. He's trying to say there is no safety critical design implemented in the culture of Linux. The way it reads to me is being the opposite of safety critical means that everything is just designed to break on purpose. There's going to be memory leaks all over the place that just been put there to make Linux as bad as it physically can be. That's not the case. And my second favorite thing is the spelling mistake. This doesn't say Linux here, it says Linus. I am so, so happy that S and X are so close to each other on the keyboard. And the final path forward, automated vulnerability scanning, basically something that's already been said, curation by safety-minded team, distribution created by known organization to establish trust, basically a third party that is going to verify that everything is safe, and delayed adoption to ensure stability. This is what every organization pretty much does anyway. Anyone who is running absolutely cutting-edge software is really, really asking for trouble. I'm sure the talk itself was a really interesting talk, and when it does come out, as I said, I'll be sure to link it, and I'll have a watch of it myself. But these slides, they got shared around in a bunch of places like Reddit, Phronix, and all that stuff, and everybody is just mocking them. But they're not as bad as you initially think they are. If you just read what they're trying to say, and think about it from the perspective of someone who works at a standards and safety company. It's not saying that Linux is just inherently bad and nothing can be dealt with. This is at a summit by the Linux Foundation. They are trying to find a path forward to bring Linux into this space. So with that, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Had you seen these slides before? Did you just see like one or two of them and then not really go and check the rest out? Or have you actually heard the talk? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did I say that? I probably did. Uh, if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Linux is the antithesis of good software design or whatever was said.